can all perceive energy on some level, and I know that you quite readily and consciously uh, perceive energy. Can you talk about the general perception of energy and why understanding energy and its movement is so important to our personal truths? Sure. Um, well, we are all energy. You know, I'm energy. This necklace is energy. This desk here is energy. If we were to look at it at its most basic foundational level, it would just be energy or light moving around. And so energy, I think, is the key for us to understand so many different things, the quality of things, um, the goodness or the rightness of things, and conversely, the wrongness of things or the misalignment of things. And if we can train ourselves to be sensitive to energy and what it's telling us, we can really be led along the path of our life, kind of like what Joseph Campbell said, you know, follow your bliss. Now, what Mr. Campbell was saying was follow that energy. What gives you within yourself that quickening, that loveliness, that acceleration or that amplification, I call it the zing zing. Oh, I just feel so good doing this or oh, that feels so good in my body. Well, that's, that's energy and that's a sign. And when we feel that, we need to trust it. Too many of us discount what we feel, right? And we, we have programming and we don't trust it. And second, we need to follow it. And the thing is, is that the energy is always happening. And energy talks to energy. If you and I were to meet in a, in a grocery store and we stood next to each other, our energies would be speaking to one another. We'd be in proximity to one another. And anytime energy impacts energy, both energies are affected as a result and changed as a result. Now, here's where it gets interesting to me. The stronger or more dominant energy always makes a more substantial change to the lesser or more passive energy. In fact, the change that it makes is the lesser energy, the passive energy, has to acclimate to the best of its ability to the level of the stronger energy. And so when we're talking about like source energy and human energy, you and I are human, we're divine, our, our I am is not human, but in this incarnation we are human. When we put ourselves into proximity with source energy or with I am energy, it forces a substantial change to our human beingness. It forces us to acclimate truly to this higher level where source dwells or where the I am dwells. And for me, this is the key to everything. Like everybody loves to talk about manifestation and the secret. And it's, it's cool. And I talk about that all the time. The key is just finding ways to get in the energy of source. And what is that energy? That energy is love. In the human experience, the closest we can come in our bodies to approximate the feeling of God is love love at its most unconditional. And so finding areas in the life where we feel love, even in the mundane things, maybe for you it's gardening or dancing or, or, or reading or singing, you know, little things though that make you feel that energy puts you into proximity with source. And doing that in a sustained way is how you change your life because and I'll end with this, I know I'm going on, you, you got me started. <laughs> Doing this is the key because the closer we get to source energy, because source energy is the most divine, strong, powerful energy in all of the universes, the more the attributes of source begin to populate the life. We become like source, right? And, and Jesus said, you are all gods. And that's what he meant. You have this power, and the more you occupy it, the more you'll see the attributes of God in your life. Things like miracles and abundance and success and peace and joy. All of that comes part and parcel with being proximate to source. That's the power of energy and understanding where the energy is in your life. Was that too much? <laughs> no, that was great. Okay. Um, you know, I think that a lot of people, a lot of us are in fear and anxiety and chronic fear and anxiety. We all have... Uh, moments, right? Yes. The moments. It's it's being in that chronic place of what you're feeling, and simply reaching, as Abraham Hicks would say, for a better feeling thought. Because you're not going to go from fear to love, but you can go from fear to maybe just being scared, um, and and you just you work your way up and into this place of proximity or even alignment at times with love. And it's about finding things that you enjoy so that you can 
reach for that better, better feeling thought. So I love yeah. the way you said that. And it's, and I agree a hundred percent with what you said. So um, maybe our audience will or won't, and maybe they'll resonate <laughs> with it, but it's a, it was beautifully said. And thank you. Thank you for bringing that, all that up. You're welcome. I would like to share a little tool that um, I teach. It's just called the bliss discipline. And what it is, is simply identifying maybe five or 10 things that just make you happy. You know, for me, it's like rolling around with my three great Danes. It's hugging on my husband. It's cooking a new meal, trying a new recipe. Sometimes it's singing, but I, I make a list of things that you know put you in that space of happiness mm -hmm. and then make it a discipline to do them more. Every single day, do at least one of those things on that list. And if you can do two of those things or spend more time doing one thing on that list and allow that list to grow so that soon you're having more and more pockets of happiness because that's magnetic. And when you spend time there, you attract more of the same as well. And you just open up the life to more higher energy or high vibration. Absolutely. And it can be anything. Yes. Um, we, uh, we enjoy green smoothies. We have a green smoothie dance. We do when the blender's going. It's silly, but it's fun. Yep. And, and it takes us, what, all of three minutes? And, you know, we're just, we've elevated our, our energy, no matter what we've been doing throughout the day. We elevate our energy for that, for that few moments. And, and it does, it works. And you, you feel so much better. And you do. And it's so awesome to do it in the morning. Like, it's awesome to, like, do it a few times a day, like morning, noon, and night. In the morning, I do something similar. I like wake up my dogs, we start moving around and I sing, um, Oh, what a beautiful morning from Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And I sing it really loud and they're used to it. They don't even bat an eye, but I just sing it because this is what I'm proclaiming. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a beautiful feeling that everything's going my way. What an affirmation. And I start my day that way. And in the middle of the day, I have little things that I do to just tune myself up and get myself back on track vibrationally. I think it makes a world of difference. Yes. And it doesn't have to take a lot of time. Right. Um, I think a lot of people say, I just don't have time. I just don't have time. You do. You do have time to sing. It's a simple song. You can sing it. <laughs> <laughs>